Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Now Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Now Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. In tua e coratari Dei e Dei in Britifica e Vivo Tutto Meo. Io ricame Dei se vicino in casa mente gente non santa. Amen. Amen. E nel cuore della sua roba. Amen. Que tu stai lo scuoti tu. Amen. Guarda e pulisci e spari tristi e sinceri. Tu infici me. E mi dai luce in tua mentalità, e tu 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 mi dai luce in tua mentalità, e in tuo e volatari dei, e dei inviti figari di un tutto mai un. Oggi dolore nostro, in nome dei dolori, qui feci c'è il metterà. Confitti o dei miei potenti, via te Maria, se mi dici, mi dia, 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 mi
et inter pax unibus bonae voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, Grazie a Giusti vi prote magum gloriam tua, Domine Deus Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Unipotens, Domine Filmi Genita Iesu Christe, Domine Deus Angus Dei Filius Patris, Vitoria Speccato Mundi Misedere Nobis, Vitoria Speccato Mundi Sushi per Deprecazione Nostra, Chi Seris et Extra Patris Misedere Nobis, Quoniam tu solus Santus, tu solus Dominus, tu solus Altissimus Iesu Christe, con Santo Spirito in gloria dei Patris. Amen. Paxo vobis et con Spirito tuo. Ordemus. Omnipotens et eterne Deus, qui in firma mundi elicis, ut forzi a queque confundas, concede propizius, Ut quebeate agnetis virginis et matiris tue solemnia colibus, e usacute patrocinia sensialibus. Per Domino nostro, mi hai su Cristo un figlio in cum, che te cum divita regna ad umanitati su di cui santi deus. Per Romia secula seculorum. Amen. Rex libri sapientia. Covite por tibi Domine Rex et calodamo te Deus salvatore meum. Covite por nomini tuo, Boni matutor et protector fatus es mici, et liberasti corpus neva perdizione, ad acque o lingue inique, et a labis occorrentium et acium, et conspecto a stanzium fatus es mici ad futur. Et liberasti me secunde multitudine misericordi et dominis tuia urgentibus, preparati sadescam, e malibus querentium anima mea, et de portis tribulationum, quae cicuto terunt me, a pressura flame, quae ci condedit me, et in medio inis non sum estuata. Te acuti ne ventris inferi, et a lingua coinquanata, et a verbo mandaci, a reginico et a lingua illustra. Laudabit usque et mortem anima mea dormium, guonio merlu e sustenete est te, et liberas eus de limanibus vigentium. Domine Deus Noster. Deo Grazia. Diffuse le sgrazie in labis tuis, proteri e benedicit e Deus in eternum, propte veritate me mansuitudine, me giustiziam e denuncete te meribilite ad extra tua. Alleluia, alleluia! Quinque prudente svigini s'acceperum tu lenum in vassi suis con lapatibus, media aut e notte clamo factus est, ecce sponsus venit, exit e opfiam Cristo Domino. Alleluia! et cum spirito tuo, sequenzie santi Vangeli secundum et terum, gloria tibi donne. In illo tempore dixit Iesus discipulis suis parabulum han, simile eret regum celorum dece veginibus, quenci pientis lampate suas, ex ieru d'opviam sponsu et sponse, quinque autem ex eis erat fatue, et quinque prudentes, sed quinque fatue et centis lampatibus non subserunt oleum secum, Prudentes vero e ceperunt oleum in vasi suis cum lampatibus. Morrem autem paciente sponso, domita veru domnes et domierunt. Media autem nocte clamo factus est, ecce sponsus venit, exit e ovvia me. Tunsur ex erunt omnes vigines ille, et non everunt lampades suas. Fatue autem trapientibus ex erunt, dati nobis de oleo vestro, cui a lampades nostre est in guntur, Responderon prudentes dicentes, Ne forte non sufficiat nobis et vobis, Ite gozius et vedentes, et emite vobis. Dum autim irente mere, venit sponsus, Et que parlate erranti traverunt, Com eo ad nuptias, et clauso esiandua. Novissime vero venium te relique vigines dicentes, Domine, Domine, aperri nobis. At ille respondens ei, Amen, dico vobis, nescio vos. Vigilate et aque, cui adescintis diem neque horram. 
Laos, TB Christ. Is the feast of St. Agnes of Rome, Virgin and Martyr. The epistle is taken from the Book of Wisdom. O Lord my King, I give thee thanks. O God my Deliverer, I praise thee. I extol thy name for all the succour and protection thou hast given me, saving my life from deadly peril, when calumny lay in wait and lying tongues assailed me. In full sight of all that stood by thou didst come to my rescue, Roaring lions stood ready to devour me, and thou in that great mercy, that renowned mercy of thine, didst deliver me. I was in the hands of my mortal enemies, shut in on every side by misfortune. There were stifling flames all round me, and I stood in the heart of the fire uninjured. I looked down into the deep womb of the grave, when foul lips brought accusations, and a cruel king gave unjust sentence. While life lasts, this heart shall praise the Lord. If men will but wait for thee patiently, thou dost deliver them. Dost rescue them, O Lord our God, from the power of the heathen. And the Holy Gospel today is a continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At that time Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who went to bring the bridegroom and his bride home, taking their lamps with them. Five of these were foolish and five were wise. The five foolish, when they took their lamps, did not provide themselves with oil, but those who were wise took oil in the vessels they carried, as well as the lamps. The bridegroom was long in coming, so that they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. And at midnight the cry was raised, Behold, the bridegroom is on his way, go out to meet him. Thereupon all these virgins awoke and fell to trimming their lamps, and now the foolish ones said to the wise, Share your oil with us, our lamps are burning low. But the wise ones answered, how if there is not enough for us and for you? Better that you should find your way to the merchants and buy for yourselves. And so, while they were away buying it, the bridegroom came. Those who stood ready escorted him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards those other virgins came with a cry, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered, Believe me, I do not recognize you. Be on the watch then. The day of it and the hour of it are unknown to you. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus e benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mate Dei, horbo nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in orari mutis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris e Fili e Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass. On this, the great feast of St. Agnes of Rome, Virgin and Martyr, one of the most beloved of uh, the Virgin Martyrs uh, that Holy Mother Church has retained close to the bosom of her heart, uh, such that uh, Agnes, of course, uh, is remembered in the canon of the Mass, and there has always existed a great devotion to her, and she has been a very great inspiration to a great many saints. She was born approximately in the year 291 AD uh, during the reign of Datius and Diocletian, uh, during what is known in church history as the time of great persecution. Such uh, was the severity uh, and the extent uh, of uh, that uh, uh, trial of the church. Of course, uh, interesting to note, and those of you who are regular watchers may have heard yesterday uh, in the homily uh, reference made to the situation of the church in our own time, which is by far uh, considerably worse uh, than even in the time of the Great Persecution. I think sometimes we forget these figures that in the 20th century alone more Christians were martyred for the faith than in any preceding uh, century, even collectively. So of all the 19th centuries uh, before the 20th century, uh, more Christians were martyred 
in the 20th century and the 21st century seems and looks to be going the same way. Indeed, uh, the past year, uh, Open Doors, uh, the uh, uh, monitoring charity of Christian persecution around the world, uh, only said yesterday uh, that uh, we, the church, uh, is enduring uh, the highest uh, number of persecutions and martyrdoms um, ever recorded in Christian history. St. Agnes then, uh, a virgin martyr, and her story of course seems so familiar to us because in so many ways it is a very familiar story of the uh, early days of the church and of the suffering and of the faith uh, that uh, very many uh, young women, young girls, uh, even in the case of Agnes, for example, who is thought to have been about 13 when she was murdered, they all share a very similar theme. It may seem strange to us, uh, but we ought uh, to, to remember that for the Romans at that time, anybody who believed any other religion other than the pagan religion of the empire was considered an atheist. So to remember that many of the uh, uh, emperors uh, of the Roman Empire declared themselves and believed themselves to be divine. Nero, of course, Caligula afterwards, and a great many others considered themselves to be living gods in their own lifetime. Thus, to reject the established religion or the state religion, to reject uh, the pagan cultus, uh, that was uh, the uh, Roman Empire was considered to be not only atheistic uh, but also of course uh, to be possibly traitorous and especially so and none more so than when emperors decreed as outlawed uh, other religions and of course they did uh, specifically in the case of Christianity a large number of times and when they did a great uh, purge would occur, very violent uh, persecutions. And of course we know uh, from the lives of the saints, we know from the earliest memories of the church uh, that a great many uh, Christians suffered for the faith. We know because their names, their witness and their testimony, the legends of their heroic virtues uh, have retained uh, to the present day. Agnes, of course, being one of the greatest among them. Her story, of course, was uh, that uh, she was born to uh, uh, Christian parents, uh, but of uh, noble stock, and uh, was considered extremely beautiful. A great many uh, suitors uh, desired her hand in marriage. She, however, had uh, dedicated and consecrated herself and her virginity to God. She desired to love no one else but our Lord Jesus Christ. And so it was that suitor after suitor was declined by her until uh, eventually uh, a suitor called Symphronus uh, reported her to the eparch or uh, to the prefect or the magistrate and denounced her as a Christian. Diocletian, of course, the emperor at this point, had already outlawed Christianity and there were already a great number of martyrs for the faith. Uh, remember yesterday we commemorated Saints Fabian and Sebastian. Sebastian, of course, was a captain of the Imperial Guard and he had been denounced and similarly uh, martyred. So it was with Agnes that they tried, as so often they did try with these young girls, to uh, corrupt them. Uh, and so if uh, they wouldn't accept uh, a suitor, uh, in Agnes's case, and uh, we might remember the same uh, of other virgin martyrs, uh, she was uh, taken to a whorehouse, to a brothel, and there every form uh, of inducement was uh, applied upon her uh, to corrupt her virtue. She refused 
and it is said that she was miraculously protected, such that when she was stripped naked, her hair miraculously grew long and thick and uh, covered her body, covered her nakedness, and that anyone who dared to approach her was blinded by a great light. This then, uh, all attempts failing, she was uh, condemned to death and was uh, martyred by the sword. Not, however, without first converting a large number of men. Uh, she uh, not only converted but even raised from the dead the son of the magistrate himself. The son uh, had tried uh, his hand at corrupting her, was uh, struck blind, indeed struck dead uh, by his attempt, so the story goes, and was yet raised, brought back to life by St Agnes's intercession. He was thus converted to the faith and himself martyred, and they number 160 other gentlemen to have uh, also been converted uh, by her virtue, by her heroic virtue. Each and every one of them too was uh, martyred. So there we have the story of St Agnes and there are other versions, there are other more uh, uh, stories of miracles and of course miraculous cures that occurred uh, after her death and by her intercession. What a wonderful example for us. What a wonderful source of inspiration she has been uh, for boys and girls, for men and women for many centuries since. Her name, of course, too, Agnes, uh, uh, means lamb. And so it is that she is associated very closely uh, with lambs, with the Lamb of God for herself, sacrificing herself for the sake of the Lamb of God. And also traditionally at this time, uh, lambs are freshly shorn uh, of their winter coat uh, and it is taken away and uh, to a particular convent where it is woven uh, into uh, wool to make the uh, palliums that the Bishop of Rome uh, gives to the Metropolitan Archbishops of his communion as a sign of their union with him. So St Agnes, whose name itself of course uh, means lamb and also of course means purity. It is of course a great shame in our own day that children as young as Agnes was, and even younger, are enduring the same kind of persecution. There are awful accounts, and plenty of them, uh, of the treatment of young girls and women by, for example, uh, Isis and Daesh uh, in the Middle East, and by Boko Haram uh, in Africa, of being uh, sold into slavery, uh, being sold as sex slaves, being forced into marriages, and remember these, these, some of these are but yet children, they are children. People often forget that Muhammad the prophet himself had a six year old bride. And this issue is not just an issue in the Middle East, but is known to go on here in secret, even in the UK and in Western countries. As well, of course, there are those who do refuse, who are beaten, who are literally flogged, who are sometimes stoned, and yes, even beheaded. The evil of mankind 
may change its name, may change its appearance, but it never alters its style and manner of manifestation. And do I, so I do urge all of you to pray for such girls, for such women who endure such trials, especially those of our faith too, who if they refuse are often martyred. As I said yesterday, sometimes it can seem when we hear the stories and legends of uh, the saints that have gone before us, like St. Agnes, it becomes perhaps to seem a little unreal. And yet how awful it is that our, in our own time, right now in the 21st century, right now this very minute, somewhere in the world a young girl is being forcibly coerced to forsake her innocence, her purity, or face death. Let us pray for such as these. Let us pray for all those who suffer for the faith. And as we've reflected upon the parable of the ten virgins before, let us, like the prudent virgins, like the wise ones, keep ourselves topped up with the light of the divine charity. For sure, my brothers and sisters, it may be the most and more certain path by example, by demonstrable witness to the love of God in our own lives, for his light to shine that may dissuade and may uh, even persuade such men as commit these atrocities to have mercy or a change of heart or a change of mind or even of conversion to faith in Jesus Christ. So often we hear, as we hear in the legend of St. Agnes, of captors being converted by the heroic virtue and by the witness and testimony of that light of Christ within the saints. Even we, my brothers and sisters, who are not enduring such persecution, ought to seek to strive by making our lives holy, by living our lives as true saints and not hypocrites, to demonstrate and shine the light of the love of God in our world, that others may be moved and drawn to it, so that they may, like us, come to realize the fullness of God's desire for us and our lives to live in love and in union with him both now and forever who is God, Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. Afferrentu regi vigine spostea, proximia ius afferrentu a tibi letizia et exaltazione, ad ucentum in templum regi domi.
dunia sekula sekulo Ece omnius Dei, ece qui tolit peccatum undi. Domine, non sum dignus, ut in tre subtectum meam, set tanto di grembo et senna pittura anima mea. Domine, non sum dignus, ut in tre subtectum meam, set tanto di grembo et senna pittura anima mea. Domine, non sum dignus, Ut in tre subtectum meam, set tantum tic verbo, et senapitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion, the words for which you will find below your viewing screen. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee, and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
pe fruntea de virgine se ceperu dole lumi vasi suis cum l-am hadus, mele aute noapte clam o fac cu ses, ece spolsus veni, exite opiam Christo Domn. Neocrat. 